Hey, Prepper Nation, this is Joe Walton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, that old doctor with a new mission in life, that is to keep your family healthy in times of trouble. For over 200 articles on how to keep it together if things fall apart, head on over to our website at www.doomandbloom.net. The title of today's video is Fish Antibiotics in a Societal Collapse. Since I'm going against the conventional medical wisdom with this video, I'm going to have to read this disclaimer. The opinions voiced in this video are for informational purposes only. They do not constitute medical advice or imply a doctor-patient relationship between the maker and viewer. The producer of this video, that's me, strongly urges you to seek modern and standard medical care whenever and wherever it is available. Accumulating medication for disaster or SHTF situations may be simple when it comes to getting ibuprofen and other non-prescription drugs. Stockpiling prescription medications, however, will be difficult for those who don't have a relationship with a physician who can or will accommodate their requests. Antibiotics are one example of medications that will be very useful in the aftermath of a major disaster or societal collapse. They'll be in short supply and in high demand. Obtaining these drugs in quantity is going to be a challenge, to say the least. Now, the inability to store antibiotic supplies is going to cost some people, poorly prepared people, their lives in a collapsed situation. Why? Well, there's a much larger incidence of infection when people have to fend for themselves and are injured as a result. Chopping wood and other strenuous activities performed in a power-down situation, especially ones that most of us aren't accustomed to doing, will cause an injury at one point or another. These wounds will very likely be dirty, and within a short period of time, they can begin to show infection in the form of redness, swelling, and heat in the area. Now, treatment of such infections, which are called cellulitis at an early stage, improves the chance that they will heal quickly and completely. However, many rugged individualists are likely to tough it out until their condition worsens and the infection spreads to their blood. This would cause a condition known as sepsis, which is essentially an infection of the bloodstream, goes throughout your entire body. You'll develop a fever as well as other problems, and eventually it can become life-threatening. The availability of antibiotics would allow the possibility of dealing with this issue safely and effectively. Now, small amounts of medications can be obtained by anyone willing to tell their doctor that they're going out of the country and would like to avoid oh, Montezuma's Revenge or Traveler's Diarrhea, whatever you like to call it. You shouldn't lie to your doctor, however. It's unethical. And anyway, a long-term alternative is required for us to have enough antibiotics to pr protect an entire family or survival group. you got to think long and hard for a solution, and I have been doing just that and it has led me to what I believe is a viable option. Aquarium antibiotics. For many years, we've been tropical fish hobbyists. And we started off by breeding and showing, actually, uh, beautiful Siamese fighting fish, also known as bettas. Currently, we're growing tilapia as a food fish in an aquaculture pond. Now, after years of using these medicines on fish... I decided to evaluate antibiotic drugs for fish for their potential use in collapse situations. Let's take a look at one of these medicines. Now here's aquatic amoxicillin. This fish antibiotic is available pretty much anywhere on the internet. If you go to eBay, you'll probably find this for sale as well as many other places on the internet. I'd like you to take a look at one of the amoxicillin, aquatic amoxicillin, pills that are on the right here. You see that it's basically a red and a pink pill, and it has the numbers WC731 on it. Now, let's take a look at an actual capsule of amoxicillin that's sold in a human phar pharmacy. You see that it's red and pink, and it has the numbers WC731. This photo happens to be from Drugs MD and is representative of a typical human amoxicillin pill or capsule. Now here's the product label 
for another aquatic amoxicillin. This one is, happens to be called fish mox. And if you take it the, a look at the upper left hand of the slide, you will see that there is only one ingredient in fish mox, and that is amoxicillin. And amoxicillin in what is the normal human dosage. Notice that there are no ingredients there that make your scales shinier or make your fins longer. It is just plain old amoxicillin. And so why, I wonder, is the fish dose exactly the same dose as you would give a human being? Why does a guppy need the same dose of amoxicillin to get better as a 180-pound adult male? Well, let's look at the directions. The reason I've been given is because it's given differently. You mix one capsule for each 10 gallons of water, and that's what some people have told me is the reason why they use human dosages. It doesn't quite match up. Yet, however, those same 10 gallons of water could be the home of a tiny little guppy, or it could be the home of a relatively large angelfish. Go to the pet store and take a look at these two fish, at least two adult angelfish, or an adult angelfish and an adult guppy, and you'll see that one is at least 20 times the size of the other. Why do these fish need the exact same dosage to get better and why does that dosage have to be the exact same dosage as a human being would need simple common sense tells me that it's because they probably come from the exact same batch that goes to the human pharmacy therefore here are a list of the products that I think will be beneficial to have as supplies in situations when modern medical care and facilities are no longer available as in a situation without rule of law or a major disaster, long-term disaster, or other type scenario. We've talked about fish mox already, which is amoxicillin. Uh, that's on the bottom left hand. You see fish mox, 250 milligrams, which is a pediatric dosage on the lower left. In the middle on the bottom row, you'll see Fish Mox Forte, which is 500 milligrams, the adult dosage. The last one in the bottom row is Fish Zole, which is Flagyl, or Metronidazole, uh, another human antibiotic in human dosage, with the only ingredient being the antibiotic. Fish Cillin above is, uh, uh, is Ampicillin, Fish Cycline is Tetracycline, Fish Flex is Keflex. I have been able to purchase all of these medications that you see on this slide without a prescription and in whatever quantity that I felt that I needed. Of course, anyone can be allergic to one or another of these antibiotics, but it would be a very rare individual that would be allergic to every single one of them. With regards to fish flex, by the way, Keflex, there is a chance of cross-reactivity between penicillin drugs like fish psyllin or fish mox, and Keflex, so feel free to consider tetracycline, fish cycline, or metronidazole, fish zole, or any of these other ones that I'm showing you here. Fish flox, which is also known as ciprofloxin or cipro. Bird biotic, which is also known as doxycycline. Yes, indeed, avian antibiotics are also safe to use if you look at the labels and find that there's only one ingredient and that it's at the correct dosage and if there has been a total societal collapse. Bird sulfa is another option. It is a sulfa drug similar to septra or bactrim, which are commonly used for urinary tract infections and other, and other issues. The last and most important thing to take away from this video is that you should always have a healthy skepticism of anything you see in videos, even like mine. <laughs> you should do your own research. You should check out all the evidence. You should come to your own conclusions based on what's right for you and whether indeed we are in normal times or whether we have entered significant times of trouble where modern medical care is no longer accessible. Nurse Amy and I talk about this subject and dozens of others 
in our new book, The Doom and Bloom Survival Medicine Handbook, which was written to give you strategies to keep your family healthy in disaster situations where medical help is not on the way. The Doom and Bloom Survival Medicine Handbook is now available over at createspace.com slash 369-7264 and Amazon as well. And you can check the book trailer out over on YouTube at the address you see on this slide or just perform a YouTube search for Survival Medicine Handbook. This has been Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, hoping that I uh, gave you something to think about. Be safe and keep on prepping. <laughs>